two things that Tom Hicks loves are baseball and business. If you were to describe his business style in baseball terms, which he likes to do, Tom Hicks has always swung for the fences. Born in Houston in 1946, Tom lived in Dallas until he was 13. While high school football was his passion, he became a minor celebrity for his part-time job, a rock and roll DJ for his dad's Port Arthur radio station. I couldn't use my real name because everybody knew my dad on the station, so my name was Steve King. Steve King, the weekend wonder boy. Tom was drawn to UT Austin to get his education, but he credits his Sigma Phi Epsilon fraternity brothers for helping to focus his ambition. After graduating, Tom sought out experience in banking in Chicago taking classes at Northwestern University and studying the ins and outs of venture capital investing. To learn even more, he headed to California to earn his MBA at USC. After spending three years at a bank in New York, he eventually landed a position as a venture capital investor at First National Bank in Dallas. At age 27, I was president of the biggest venture capital firm in the Southwest that was owned by Dallas's biggest bank back then. By his late 30s, Tom was a partner in his own investment firm and had led his first major leveraged buyout, the $415 million purchase of Dr. Pepper. As Tom's assets grew, so did his remarkable reputation. He led the consolidation of nearly all the non-Coke and non-Pepsi soft drink industry and the acquisition of over 600 radio stations into a company that eventually became Clear Channel Communications, owner of 9% of the nation's radio stations. He also became CEO of the global private investment firm Hicks, Muse, Tate and First. In 1995, Governor Ann Richards appointed this life member of the Texas Exes to the UT Board of Regents with a clear mandate to help improve the way the UT system invested its endowments. I found out political appointees that are there for six years have all these people rolling over, there's no institutional memory, and it costs the university billions and billions of dollars. As a result of Tom's work, he was named the first chairman of UTIMCO, recognized today as a national model for university endowment management. In 1996, Tom purchased the Dallas Stars hockey team. That initial short-term deal has grown into one of Tom's most successful ventures and greatest thrills. Today, he's also the owner of the Texas Rangers and co-owner of the Liverpool Football Club in England. The good thing about sports is you kind of, you, know, you find out the next morning did you win or lose, and uh, you don't have to wait five years to see if it's gonna be a successful activity. Tom has six children, and he and his wife, Cinda, support a variety of causes in their hometown of Dallas. She's helped kind of soften me up over the years. I didn't know what the word empathy meant, but she, she's helped me learn. And uh, uh, said she's the best things that ever happened to me. And one of the best things to happen at the University of Texas is Tom's bold leadership. I've always had a tendency to look forward. Uh, I think big. I think I, I get so enthusiastic about what I'm doing. I think people kind of get caught up on it and want to tag along and do it with me. Tonight we honor a Texas ex whose ambition to be the best has meant huge rewards for his university. I think uh, you know, what we do, the mission we serve, that's all great stuff and great to be part of. And uh, I'm proud to have done a little bit to try to help it along the way. Tom Hicks, a distinguished alumnus of the University of Texas at Austin. How would you like to do this following somebody that does it for a living? <laughs> but I like this jacket. Um, you know, like a lot of you, I came to the University of Texas from kind of a small town, Port Arthur. Uh, I'm a bit of a late bloomer, and when I got here, uh, I found myself, and I was transformed, and I, it was clearly the academics in the classroom, 
uh, uh, relationships, the mentors I had in my fraternity, the leadership positions on campus, uh, all those things came together at a magical time for me where I felt when I left here, I just felt totally confident that I'd be successful in whatever I would do. That's kind of my optimism anyway, but uh, I really felt grounded and secure in that by the time I left with my education from UT Austin. The longer you're around the University of Texas, the more you love it, you appreciate it more and more. My wife, Cinda, joins me in it now. I have six children, three of them have been here, two still have a, a chance if they want. Uh, but, you know, the, you can't really love anything until you also give something back to it. So if I, if I fast forward 30 years from the, as the clip said, I had the opportunity to interview to take the unfulfilled term Pete Conway had on the board and Governor Richards and John Fainer here tonight was there, I know, and uh, she said, you know, we're, we're dead last of 100 universities on managing our money. I'm embarrassed about it. It's costing us money. And uh, she gave me a mandate. Yeah. And uh, she was very wisely said, money is power. And I'm willing to give up that power if you can find ways to fix this. And fortunately, uh, Bernie Rappaport, the chairman of the board at the time, was prepared to give up his power. And Bill Cunningham, the chancellor at the time, was prepared to give up his power. And the group came together, and we got legislation, and we did pass UTEMCO. And the key was to have the institutional memory for asset allocation that would survive the political appointees that many of us were. And the outside directors uh, uh, were, were key to that. Uh, uh, Ambassador Richard Fisher, now president of the Dallas Reserve, was our part of our first group, as was Susan Byrne Montgomery, chairman of Westwood. He, she's here tonight. She was an oak uh, in a howling wind a number of times, uh, Luther King. Um, and then that, that whole concept was brought into and it was supported by then uh, when Governor Bush came in, by uh, Don Evans when he was chairman of the board, later by James Huffines, and now uh, Bob Rowling's the chairman of UTEMCO and Charles Tate's one of the outside directors. And it's 12 years old and it's just going to last. It can't you know, we've, we've had the bad, predictable, politically motivated, inaccurate press attacks. We've had people trying to take the power back, but all that's gone. And UTEMCO will survive, and it's now consistently one of the top 40. And um, I think everybody in UTEMCO should be very proud of that. The second area I kind of had in the nexus of my life to be able to give something back was on the athletic side. If you noticed, I I'm involved in that. Some of my critics think this is my fourth team, but uh, <laughs> uh, I think the when I got involved in the leadership, it's hard to believe that there was a decade, probably two decades, where there was a true belief that academic excellence and athletic excellence were mutually exclusive and nothing could be farther from the truth. When we play tomorrow night, a home game ranked as the number one team in the country. It'll be the first time we've done that since 1977. But Don, with Don Evans' help and Tom Leffler's uh, and the terrific job DeLoss Dodds d did, uh, there was an uh, improvement to the facilities and an upgrading of the coaches. And tomorrow night we'll have 98,000 screaming people with a beautiful new north end zone. And we're going to improve the south end zone next year. And I, I think if President Powers can get the fire marshal, we can maybe be one of five universities to have 100,000 seats and uh, that'll be very special. And it's, it's not just football, it's women's athletics, it's basketball, but the whole concept of uh, winning athletics uh, help winning academics and vice versa. So anyway, I'm, I'm so proud to be uh, wearing this jacket and be part of this, this esteemed group that I see in front of me tonight. And I, I want to thank all of you. Thank you.